Welcome to 5 Minute School. Today's video we're going to be talking about the loop of Henle, which is a part of the nephron. The last few videos we've been talking about the proximal convoluted tubule, and the loop of Henle is the part of the nephron which is after the proximal convoluted tubule. So we can see this diagram here on the left, which shows you the nephron tubule. And we can see here is the proximal convoluted tubule, and then when we go down here, this is where we have the loop of Henle. So it's this region here, and we can divide the loop of Henle into the ascending limb, which is this part here, which goes up, and the descending limb, which is this part here that goes down. So to begin this video on the loop of Henle, we're going to first talk about the ascending limb first. So we can divide the ascending limb into two regions. We have the thick and thin segment of the ascending limb. So you can see here we have the thin segment, which is just after the initial loop. And then here we have the thicker segment here. And this thick segment of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle is what carries the filtrate to the distal convoluted tubule, which is located in the renal cortex. And that's this region here. So the thick segment is what carries the filtrate to that region. So salt is initially going to be ejected from this th thick segment of the ascending limb into the surrounding interstitial fluid. And in cells of the thick portion of ascending limb, we have the movement of sodium ions down its electrochemical gradient from the filtrate into the cells. So we have uh, sodium ions which are going to be in the filtrate and they're going to move from a region which has a more positive charge, which is the filtrate, to the cells of the uh, ascending limb, which is less positive in comparison. And what this does is once the sodium ions move out, it powers um, secondary active transport. So because now we have the uh, sodium ions move into the cells of the ascending limb, it becomes slightly more positive. So to balance it, chloride ions are then going to move in and also potassium ions are also going to move in. So it initially powers the, the movement of um, chloride and potassium to also follow through after sodium is moving into these cells. And the ratio of which this occurs is one sodium ion per two chloride ions per one potassium ion. Now the sodium ions are then actively transported across the basolateral membrane of the epithelial cells of the ascending limb into the interstitial fluid, which is the fluid surrounding the nephron via sodium and potassium pumps. And then chloride ions are gonna also follow passively because it's gonna become more positive. So chloride is gonna follow and then we also have uh, potassium ions which are going to diffuse back into the filtrate. Now, unlike the epithelial walls of the proximal tubule, the walls of the ascending limb of the loop of Henle are not permeable to water. So the filtrate in the ascending limb becomes increasingly dilute as it ascends to the cortex, which is here. So while the fluid surrounding a loop of Henle in the medulla becomes increasingly concentrated, we have the filtrate which is going to become more dilute. So the fluid entering the distal tubule is going to be then called hypotonic, and the interstitial fluid in the medulla, so surrounding the, the loop of Henle in this region here, is going to become hypotonic or more concentrated. Lastly, we're going to talk about the descending limb of the loop of Henle, and that's this region which you can see here. The descending limb doesn't actively transport salt and is impermeable to passive diffusion of salt. So just remember that there is no in the, there is no movement of salt in the descending limb. However, in the descending limb, it is permeable to water, and that's because the surrounding interstitial fluid is very concentrated. So uh, we can say that the surrounding interstitial fluid is hypotonic to the filtrate, which is inside the descending limb. So what's going to happen is water is going to get drawn out of the descending limb by osmosis from a high to low concentration, and then it's eventually going to en enter into the peritubular capillaries. Now, just to finish off the video, last few points. The concentration of tubular fluid is therefore increased, and its volume is decreased as it de descends towards the tips of the loop. Now, remember, if water is initially going to get removed, in the descending limb, it means the filtrate is going to become more concentrated as it passes into the ascending limb. And remember, here is where the salt is also removed, 
and then the fluid becomes more dilute again when it's going to pass into the distal convoluted tubule because here is where some of the salt is going to get removed. Now the result of these passive transport processes in the descending limb is the fluid that passes the loop into the ascending limb has the same osmolarity as that of surrounding interstitial fluid and that is going to be 1200 to 1400 milliosmoles.